Spoilers ahead. Watch out, and take care. The movie starts with a state-of-the-art penitentiary, experimenting with the effects of research chemicals. The test subjects, technically prisoners of the state, are volunteers for the project, aiming to reduce their sentence time. The program is overseen by the sympathetic and hospitable Steve Abnesty, along with his assistant Mark. The prisoners have their rooms, do chores, and are free to roam without guard supervision. The subjects go through daily test runs of various drugs, all of which alter their emotions, and their perceptions of their surroundings. Then, we see a man named Ray, who has volunteered to be a subject for a particular study. The man cannot stop laughing, he is told a joke to trigger his laughter, after that, they even try telling him about one of the greatest tragedies in the world, but the man does not stop laughing. Steve sees him laugh, and smiles because their experiment has turned out to be successful. The next day, Steve approaches the Spiderhead Research Center. In the next scene, they are in a boat, and a man with a blindfold is sitting between the two scientists, this prisoner's name is Jeff. After that, we see Jeff coming into a kitchen, and there is a woman there as well, who Jeff acts like he is familiar with. Both of them are criminals, having committed different crimes. Jeff behaves in a peculiar manner, talking and looking at things differently, seeming like he has been influenced by something. Steve stays close to him, observes his movements and words. He looks at a factory, and expresses that he loves seeing it. When Jeff is in his room, he reminisces about the good times when he was free, he used to go to parties with his girlfriend, and life used to be good. We then see that one night he was over speeding, and got into an accident. We are then back in the lab, Jeff is ready to be interviewed, and a woman walks in and sits right in front of him. She has an appealing appearance, and Jeff is unable to take his eyes off of her. When Jeff is asked questions, he rates the woman 8 out of 10 for her attractiveness, and when it is the woman's turn, she does not even give him a 5. It turns out that they have been given a love drug. They start feeling something, and their body language feels different. They start getting uncomfortable, or too comfortable. The two start feeling things for each other, hence the drug is doing well, as Steve observes sitting close to the two subjects. They even get intimate, as the two are unable to control themselves. However, the effects of the drugs given to them wear off after a while, and now comes the interesting part for the scientist, he wants to see if they still act like two love birds, even after the effect has worn off. As Steve observes, they act in the same manner for the next few days. After a while however, the two do not really seem infatuated towards one another. Now, it is time to conduct another experiment, Steve puts something in Jeff's Mobipoc, and tells him not to let anyone touch it, otherwise, they could get in trouble. In this experiment, they have brought in a different woman, she is older, and her name is Sarah. They have been injected with the same dose as Jeff and the previous woman Heather. After the talk with Sarah, Jeff ends up sleeping with her as well. Now, he has slept with two different women while being influenced by the love drug. It is time for Steve to sit next to him and make some observations. He asks him if he should give Darken Flocks to one of the women Jeff slept with. It will be revealed later on, what Darken Flocks is. Jeff however does not choose any woman. We then learn that the substance that was given to the subjects is known as N40, which could very much change the world. They plan on using it to make people love each other. When Jeff is about to go away after the conversation, Steve asks him what he really wants, and before Jeff gives him an answer, the scene changes. We talked about him being drunk and overspeeding the car earlier, we now learn that one of his friends died in that accident, and upon being asked what he really wants, Jeff tells Steve that he wants to go back in time, and fix what happened that night. We then see him chilling in the facility, and a guard approaches to call him in. He is given a phone, on which he hears a voicemail from his parents. His father tells him that this is going to be his last voicemail ever. Later, Christmas is approaching, and Jeff celebrates it a little early with Lizzie. The scene then changes, and Jeff is back at it again, sitting in the same chair, but this time, in front of him sits a big man. Jeff is annoyed, and refuses to have anything to do with that man. He walks out, and there, he learns that Sarah is being asked the same questions as him. He gets angry and starts yelling, but Steve tells him to shut it down, as he explains that their lives in this place are much easier than the ones in the actual prisons. Jeff realizes that Steve is right, and apologizes to him before agreeing with the doctor. That night, we see Steve behaving differently, he is dancing around in the middle of the night, and it is evident in his action that he himself has taken the same drug, N40. The next day, Jeff is sitting with Lizzie, and tells her about the darkened flocks. He tells her, that if it is given to someone, they are going to feel like they are on fire, in fact even worse than fire. From the way he acts around Lizzie and how he talks to her, it seems like he is attracted to the woman, 
We then see Steve asking his assistant to inject him with a double dose of one of the drugs, the man tells him to be careful, but Steve orders him to go on. In the meantime, Jeff arrives there, Steve asks him about the women again, asking if he should give them darkened flocks, and Jeff again makes it clear that he does not feel anything for them. Well, they give some darkened flocks to Heather, as Steve observes her, we see her acting as if she is actually on fire, she cannot sit in one place, and it is emotional hell in her brain. Things start getting dangerous for the woman, as she gets worse and worse, and we see her banging her head against the wall, throwing things here and there. When she hits her head on the wall, it gets worse, as the darkened flocks is over flooded in her system. Heather commits suicide while on the darkened flocks, after she damages her Mobipoc, the device that administers the drugs. This causes Mark to doubt their work in the facility. Steve is shocked at this. As Steve rushes out of the projection room, he drops his keys. Jeff unlocks Steve's desk compartment, discovering that there are no higher-ups, the prison is run by Amnesty Pharmaceuticals. The drugs were named from a bingo card. Jeff learns that Steve was not just planning on injecting them with the love drugs, in fact, the man plans on conducting a lot more experiments on them. Steve on the other hand, feels something is wrong, and rushes back to where Jeff is, but Jeff manages to put the key back to its place in time. Steve then begs Jeff not to tell anyone about the unfortunate incident, otherwise, the authorities are going to shut down the facility. Jeff is however both shocked and upset about what just happened, Steve then makes him feel a little better about the experiments, as he explains that they are doing everything to help humanity. Jeff gets better, and we see him and Steve talking about some funny incidents from the past, and having a good laugh about it. It however turns out that the two were using the laughing substance. We then see Steve giving the darkened flocks to Lizzie, she becomes weird, and is scared of a staple. As Steve observes her actions, it seems he is enjoying himself, as the girl goes through agony. Jeff and Lizzie now start getting close to each other, and Jeff reveals, while talking to her, that he not only killed his friend in the car accident, but his girlfriend as well. Lizzie hugs him and they kiss. She tells him that she understands his pain, and tries to comfort him as much as she can. As the two spend more time together, it seems like the two of them are falling in love. Steve notices Jeff's feelings for Lizzie. Mark becomes doubtful of Steve's motives, and breaks down when Jeff confronts him. That evening, when Steve reveals to Jeff that Dark and Flocks is gonna be given to Lizzie today, Jeff right away gets pissed off, and tells him not to go through with it. Steve tells him to come back to the lab the next morning, and they will start again. Mark comes to Jeff's room, and reveals all the things about Steve and his plans to Jeff. He tells Jeff that Steve only cares about one drug, and that is known as B6, the red drug. By telling all these things to Jeff, Mark realizes that he is screwed up. The next morning, Jeff is back with Steve. When Steve asks Jeff to administer darkened flocks to Lizzie, Jeff takes control of Steve's Mobipoc, and forces him to admit, that the true goal of the program is to test a compliance drug, B6. The other drugs are merely side projects, being used to put B6 to the ultimate test, whether or not they would harm their love when commanded to. The entire time that the inmates had been consenting to the various tests, they had really been under the influence of the obedience drug. In addition, Steve informs Jeff, that he had in fact finished his sentence seven months previously, while Lizzie's appeal for release had passed the previous week. Jeff forces Steve to open the door of the main entrance to free Lizzie, and then tries to order him to hand over the pocket knife. Steve resists, and instead takes his phone, and enables all four vials of darkened flocks in Lizzie's Mobipoc, causing her to behave hysterically and attempt suicide. The two fight for control, and Jeff is able to disarm Steve, damaging his Mobipoc in the process. Jeff rushes to save Lizzie, successfully removes the vials of darkened flocks, and tells her he loves her, but Steve gets up, and orders the other inmates to apprehend Jeff and Lizzie. They are able to escape from Spiderhead after overpowering some of the other inmates, and locking the main door behind them. Mark and the police are now approaching the island, as Steve escapes on his float plane, but he joyously crashes into a mountain, as he is high off of his damaged Mobipoc. Meanwhile, Jeff and Lizzie take the remaining motorboat and escape. The end. Thank you for watching. Subscribe if you'd like to see more videos like this. Turn on the notifications, and leave a like to help the channel out.